Okay, welcome back to the channel guys, and I want to begin this video by saying congratulations to all of us who didn't panic sell during this first correction we had in more than two years. When looking back at historical charts, it's very easy to look at different corrections and say, wow, that's a great buying opportunity, but when you're in the heat of the moment and all the issues are fresh and new, it can be rather intimidating. So again, congrats to all of us who made it through this without panic selling. When it comes to my portfolio, in the past one day, we're down about half a percent. In the past week, though, we're up three and a half percent. The past one month, six and a half. Although in the past one quarter, not as pretty. But I have to say, one investment that I've been extremely happy with since day one is right here. It's XYLD, and I use it in combination with VOO. Now, these ETFs are very misunderstood because they're specialty ETFs. If you want to make a simple portfolio consisting of the NASDAQ and the S&P 500, a fund like XYLD or QYLD will not fit into that strategy. In fact, in that case, it's a really poor investment. But if you're like me and you want to boost dividend income within a greater overall portfolio, that's where these ETFs can really shine. And I have to say recently, even with all this volatility, I've been very happy with this investment. So today's video is going to be dedicated to trying to understand these often misunderstood investments. And this is a great time to be doing this because all of the volatility we just had acts as a great test to these funds to see how they perform during adverse times. And as always, before jumping into this, if you guys enjoy my content, let me know, leave a like, subscribe, it really does help me out a lot with the algorithm and I greatly appreciate it. Okay, so this is year to date, which encompasses all the recent volatility we just had of XYLD in blue and the S&P 500 in yellow. And overall, XYLD is down about 3% and the S&P 500 down around 6%. So right off the bat, this fund has been less volatile and held on to its value better than the S&P 500 over the past year to date. And on top of that, if you take a look at the actual monthly dividends, not only have they not been suspended during this volatility, but they're actually the highest Ever. They just announced the dividend for the month of March, and it's 50 cents per share. Now, I do want to take this opportunity to quickly discuss a topic people ask all the time, which is, why not just buy something like the QQQ and sell shares as you go, instead of focusing on monthly or quarterly dividends? Now, yes, you can technically do this, it's called taking profits, but comparing it to consistent monthly dividends is extremely flawed, in my opinion, for two primary reasons. So right here we have the one-year price action of the S&P 500, and here is the one-year dividend history of XYLD. The major takeaways here is that the volatility is significantly higher when it comes to the price action, because this represents what other people are willing to pay for this asset over time. The dividend history, on the other hand, is simply the amount of income this asset can generate. But there's one more comparison I want to make here, and that's that if you look closely between these two graphs, you can notice a slight inverse relationship between these two. So as the market is going up and there's low levels of volatility, the monthly dividend payments from XYLD are a little bit lower, but when volatility increases and the market goes down, the monthly dividend income actually increases here. So it can act as a great hedge in that aspect. And even putting XYLD aside and looking at actual dividends from say SCHD, the reliability of those dividend payments are way more than the price action of a stock. So yes, in theory, selling shares might be the same as dividend payments, but real life is very different. And things like stability are very important when it comes to income, especially during volatile periods in the market. But on top of this, you can take it one step further and think of these income generative assets like a business or rental properties. So with a rental property, as you can see depicted right here, you collect monthly income and you hope the property maintains its value or slightly increases year to year. This consistent monthly income is what allows you to pay your expenses and live off of. What you don't do is sell ownership of this rental property every month to mimic income. So it's just a different way of looking at the situation and adjusting your expectations. So I think it's important to have both kinds of assets, those that are income generative like a rental property and those that are more speculative and could double in value over time. Okay, but with that out of the way, I want to get back to the main topic of this video, which is why I prefer XYLD over QYLD, and by extension, RYLD. So when it comes to XYLD, QYLD, and RYLD, they all operate exactly the same way, just based off of a different index. And what they do is that every month, they sell at the money call options on their respective index. And that's it, very simple. If you want something with downside protection, you have to go with XRMI, and they add a put option into the equation. And of course, when it comes to selling at 
at the money covered calls, they completely limit your participation and the upside of equity prices. Because at the end of the 30 day period, if the price of the asset is more than it was 30 days ago, they get called away at that price. But regardless of what happens, you get to keep the premium collected at the beginning of the month by selling the call option. And that's the primary source of return with these investments. And to prove this, if we look at the price history of XYLD over the past one year, it does have some price appreciation, 3.32%. But if we take a look at the total return over that same time period, it's almost 14%. So all of that difference is the premium collected by selling and call options. In fact, a helpful way to think about these ETFs is to not think of it as investing in the actual underlying index, rather it's a side business selling insurance on stocks. So XYLD, for example, is simply selling insurance on the S&P 500. And if the stock price goes up, the people that bought that insurance now can buy it at a cheaper price. And that's how I use XYLD within my portfolio. I have the S&P 500 right here for exposure to those equities, but then I have this business selling insurance to generate additional income. In fact, if we come back up to this right here, I showed that as the volatility in the market increases, your dividend payments increase. And that's because when there's more volatility, people want more insurance. And that explains why the most recent dividend payment for XYLD was the highest ever. So with this strategy, it seems like the volatility is what matters most because that's what generates the income and thus the return. And that's why people love QYLD. It's based off the NASDAQ 100, which is very tech heavy, and thus it's very volatile and it generates a 12% dividend yield. However, if you look at the performance over the past one year, XYLD has done the best, followed by RYLD, and QYLD isn't holding up as well. And there's a simple explanation to this, and that's that yes, volatility equals higher dividend income Income. However, too much volatility can cause the ETFs to never fully recover because again, they do not participate in any upward price action. And in my opinion, that's what's happening with QYLD. It's simply too volatile and has crashes too often for this strategy to work. And here's a little visual in what I'm talking about. So in example A here, we have a beginning stock price of $100, then there's a 50% correction. That means the new stock price is $50. Now say the stock goes up 50%, that leaves you with a price of $75. But in example B, we begin with $100, we have a change of only negative 20%, that leaves us with a value of $80, then all we need is a positive 40%, and we have a final price of $112. And if you plot these two investments on a chart, it should look something like this, B being the better investment, and that's even though it had less price appreciation, because it was less volatile to begin with. And if you take a look at XYLD and QYLD side by side, it's basically the same graph. So I'm going to go ahead and say that when it comes to these investments, you want a nice middle ground when it comes to their volatility. More volatility equals higher dividend payments. However, if volatility level is simply too high and there's corrections too often, due to how these work, you can slowly bleed out the NAV over time. And between these three versions, I have to say it looks like the S&P 500 is that best middle ground. It still has a very competitive monthly dividend yield, and during times of high volatility, that yield goes up but the index doesn't have major corrections that often, leading to a healthy maintenance, if not slight growth to the NAV of the ETF. So that's my opinion on the matter. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this. If you're still watching and enjoyed, I appreciate a like on the video, even subscribing to the channel. And hopefully now we all have a slightly better understanding of how these ETFs work, when you should be using it, and potentially which version is best. That's gonna do it for me in this video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.